Hello, I'm Lee, I'm an energy intuitive, and every month I take the pulse on what's showing up energetically in our collective. A few of the key themes this month are major month for healing in November, emotional and physical, personal clarity arising as a result of the outer chaos, how small acts of peace will be galvanizing, and painful truths and soothing truths, how truths coming out and rising to the surface are gonna play a big part in the month of November. Stay tuned for the full update. Hello, welcome to the energy update for November and good morning from California, wherever you are in the world. So this is, as we all know, a majorly transformational time on the planet. And one of the things that I have been hearing repeatedly as a message over recent weeks, and of course years, is that everything is playing out exactly as it is meant to. This is very challenging for us on a human level because that message comes from the soul realms and the energy realms. On a human level, where we get drawn into what we're seeing playing out with our friends, our loved ones, the wider world, the planet as a whole, it can be very triggering, sometimes alarming. And so there is this incredible wave of fear and emotional energy that is very up on the surface right now. So what that looks like is people having very strong opinions that they will not move from. So for example, you may be in a discussion with somebody and they may have a very black and white idea or response to something. And for you, it might seem very strange that they can't find the gray. They can't be open to a different possibility or a different way of seeing. Whenever we are dealing in absolutes, whenever somebody is rigid about their opinion or their belief, or whenever we are rigid about our opinions or our beliefs, there is always an emotion holding us in place. There is always some level of fear, fear of the future or fear from the past, trauma that is showing up in the now and is really grabbing hard to what it is that we are fighting for, standing for in our belief or in our opinion. There is always an emotional energy underneath that belief. So be aware of that if you're someone who is as you probably are if you're watching this video, very sensitive to energy. Because what you will be picking up on, what will be making some of you feel a little sick to your stomach in this time of absolutes and war of right and wrong between people, is not necessarily their opinions or their beliefs, but the immovability of their emotional state. And equally, that's true for us too. You know, we will find ourselves, just because we are in this ocean of humanity right now, we're all part of it, we will find ourselves having stronger emotional reactions to seemingly inconsequential things. And that's always the sign that you've got some emotions that you're moving through. When what it is that is triggering you seems so ridiculous or unnecessary, that's when you know you are releasing what is collective stress at this time. It has been a very long year on planet Earth. And for some of you, I know you might say very long decade, I get it. But especially this year, what is different about 2020 is that everybody has been put into a very transformational state. So the emotions are high, the emotions are reactive, and in many cases, the emotions are exhausted. People are tired, people are more stressed than usual. So you'll see these little outbursts happening all around you. The trick is going to be how can you continue to find your personal clarity while in the midst of outer confusion? And that's one of the first themes this month, personal clarity in the face of outer confusion. This is one of the positive sides of an outer world in chaos. We get to learn who we really are. And of course, who we are is changing all of the time. And that's part of the thing about being a soul in a human body. We are going to evolve all through our life. We're going to change all through our life. But you might be coming to some major aha moments at this time in your life, in this year on the planet that perhaps you've never had before. Really getting down to the fundamentals of what matters to you, 
what is important to you and what is not important to you. And I say that not just because we've all kind of been locked in our houses for most of the year. It's more to do with the shift in our relationships, our personal relationships, the people we're closest to, and also as many of our relationships have been removed or changed in terms of how frequently we can see each other, you really start to deepen this relationship with yourself. Sometimes that looks like purging emotions, trauma. And that brings me to this next theme for this month. It's going to be a major month for healing, emotional and physical. So for many of you, you will see emotional healing coming up to the surface this month, getting to the bottom of something that perhaps has plagued you for years, or even if you're not getting to the bottom of it, just beginning to examine something that you've been carrying perhaps for years. If not you, other people around you who will suddenly be surfacing healing. So I know for empaths, when we hear that it's a major healing month on the planet, some of you can worry about that. Oh my God, how's that gonna make everybody feel? How am I gonna cope with how everybody feels? Well, actually the good news is when it's a healing month and when this energy is surfacing, people are actually having breakthroughs. So it's a stark contrast to what I shared at the beginning you know, this kind of right-wrong fight that you're seeing going on on the planet. People with very strong opposing opinions, no room for middle ground, and no room for just acknowledging the humanity between us all, and that we're all here on the planet, getting through it and going through it together. So whenever people separate from each other in that way and start fighting and standing for what they believe in, there is always trauma, there is always emotion underneath. It doesn't mean they're gonna to get to the bottom of it, and it doesn't mean they're necessarily going to want you to point that out to them. But it might help you unhook a little bit faster if you realize this is a battle with someone's emotional makeup that is nothing to do with me or that I can't do anything about because this runs deep. And I don't know what's driving this person to be in this stance but I do know that fighting them back or holding a stance against them isn't necessarily going to help. Those of you who are empathic and are still working on your boundaries, are still working on, I, I should say, the kind of foundational boundary stuff for empaths, which is where you're not ricocheting off everyone else's emotion. You're gonna to have to be very careful in this month around how much you ingest of other people's emotional stance. Because like I've said, for the, all the months of this year, the emotions are rising on the planet in a way that is not always in people's awareness. So people don't always know that they're emotional or angry. They think they're right, or they think they're, it was unjustified that this happened to me. What they're not picking up on is like, oh, I'm actually quite triggered, I'm quite angry. I should actually let this emotion move or do something with it. The head, is the only place that has their focus. And when people are trying to push their emotions through their head or their mind, and whenever we are trying to push our emotions through our mind or our head, it's never comfortable. Because this tiny little place is way, way smaller than everything that's going on in the energy field. So when emotion, it's like trying to think of a wine bottle and how, how small the, the top of a wine bottle is and, and how everything has to pour through this very small spout. It's the same when our emotions are trying to resolve themselves through our minds only. It doesn't work. It's painful. It takes time. So you may be someone who is aware of that for yourself. And I'm pretty good at that now. I'm like, oh, I'm clearly processing something. Okay. And it doesn't take me too long to kind of calm down or switch focus or do something about it. But most people haven't necessarily investigated this at this point in history. So have some compassion, but also have some necessary boundaries. And if you are that empath that is a sponge, you might want to be a little careful about where you go, what you expose yourself to, and who you hang out with in November, because it's definitely going to be a stormy month in terms of collective arguments, opinions, and emotional reactions. Okay, uh, that leads me to shockwaves and revelations, particularly, particularly in the second half of November. Um, this message came to me that you're going to see more shockwaves and revelations coming out on a collective level. 
So whenever I hear on a collective level in a message, that tends to mean that more the majority than the minority are going to be participant in these shockwaves and revelations. So um, that's coming a little later in the month, and I'm as curious as you are to see what that is. But one of the underlying themes for this month is painful truths and soothing truths. A painful truth is something that we either surface in ourselves or someone brings to us that in the moment it's delivered is hard to take. It feels jarring. It feels like not what you wanted. But these painful truths are coming out so that we can clear the foundations of our society, our world, and so we can move forward without carrying history with us, the shadow side of history. So there will be some painful truths that will show up both collectively and in your personal life this month, but also soothing truths. And I want you to consider that they're one and the same thing. A truth that is very painful on a Friday by the following Tuesday may have become a soothing truth because you realize what it is facilitating in your world, what it has changed. So some of you may experience these truths as painful when they first come into your awareness, some of you might immediately go, oh, well, that's a relief because that makes me understand everything that happened in a completely different way. So painful truths and soothing truths. And it's going to depend on who you are and where you are as to how you experience those, if those are going to be one of the themes for you this month. Okay, um, illusions and lies. This goes back into shockwaves and revelations. Illusions and lies revealed, explored, and shared in the collective. So very similar to painful and soothing truths. The key here with any illusions or lies that get revealed, explored, and shared in our collective, how do we react to them? Because our reaction is everything. Our reaction to anything that's exposed to us, anything that's challenging, anything that's difficult, is going to highly influence what happens next and how we as a world move forward. So. I know I'm not alone in praying for emotional maturity in our collective and also on my own dance of becoming more emotionally mature, hopefully every single day. But that emotional maturity, that level of compassionate awareness and emotional maturity is what we're going to need as we move forward. So it's interesting because on the one hand, these themes of November, as they were given to me, they seemed quite uh, intense. But every time I had a personal reaction to each of these themes as they were coming through, I just kept hearing from my guides, no, no, this is good. This is a major healing month for the planet and it's needed. So illusions and lies revealed, explored, and shared in the collective. Remember, your reaction is everything. So take a quiet moment if you need to. Be mindful of hyper-reactivity, over-reactivity. It's okay if you react, but think about what you might want to do with that reaction. You might not want to make a phone call, make an accusation, send an email. You might want to go, I'm just going to leave the room for 20 minutes so that I can process this before I take an action to try and purge the emotion through my actions, which is often what we do. It's like, oh, this doesn't feel good. Right, I'm going to tell you what your problem is. You know, it's like, Bleh! kind of vomiting the emotion out. See if you can be with where you're at and self-care before you take actions that might have further consequences and just perpetuate the same emotions that we're clearing as a society and as individuals. Now this leads me to the next point which is the quiet magic of November can be found everywhere but it will be found in stillness and it will be found in quietness. Now Stillness, as they have explained to me, is not necessarily silence. Sometimes it's silence, but you can be in a chaotic room and you can close your eyes. And even with all the noise outside you and around you, you can just close your eyes and experience yourself for a moment and draw all of your energy into your focus. And you can just affirm to yourself something like, I am here, I am here right now. I am present in this body, I am present on this earth, I am here right now. Little simple phrases like that that bring you back to your own presence when either it's very chaotic outside and around you or you're getting seduced into everyone else's energy and you feel like you're losing yourself. So 
the quiet magic can be found everywhere. So ask yourself this month, how is my relationship to stillness? Because it is where the power and where the reset can be found in November. So stillness might be you writing a book or a blog post. Stillness might be you gardening or tidying up an area of your house. Stillness might be you very consciously sitting down and listening to some music or to a podcast. Stillness might be yoga, meditation. Anything that focuses you and focuses your energy in a way that it isn't just in reaction to the outside world. So be mindful of the overstimulation, be mindful of the, the chaos of it all. And if the chaos of it all is something you're enjoying or you're finding your way through it, great. If the chaos of it all starts to overwhelm you, which is a theme in 2020, you need to know how to bring yourself back to stillness. What does it for you? It might be your favorite TV show. It doesn't matter what it is that you're going to use to reset yourself but knowing how to reset yourself is going to be crucial this month. So if you're listening and you're like, I'm not really sure, just think of five things you enjoy to do, write them down on a piece of paper and stick them somewhere visible in your house because I promise in that moment where we're already stressed, we don't tend to be great at managing ourselves. So if you have a list visible somewhere that if you're like, oh my God, I'm overwhelmed. Oh yeah, I wrote that list to help me when I'm overwhelmed. Go to the list, oh, five things, oh, the fourth thing, I can do the fourth thing. I feel like doing the fourth thing, I'll do it now. So little ways that you can kind of manage yourself in the future by leaving yourself a note from the now. Okay, and uh, last two themes for this month are this actually spanned from a conversation I was having with a friend. And as I was having the conversation, I heard very strongly talk about that in the energy update because a lot of people are speak, uh, experiencing it. Do you create structure in order to experience flow or do you flow and then structure appears from that? Now, let me break that down. Uh, so I have you know, a, a pretty, a fair structure in my, in my world, but I also have enough space in that structure that it can flow and it can flow through. Equally, there are other times in my life that I've experienced no structure and I have just let structure appear from flow. So I think in our world, we have this tendency, you know, you see everyone out there has their way of doing things. And there are certain people out there saying, this is how you achieve your goal. Well, of course, there is no this is because that won't be relevant for everybody. We're all different. We're all experiencing things in different ways. We're all built very differently. So each of us has our own way of doing things. So you might be finding in this crazy identity shift that so many are experiencing this year because the world is on its axis in many different ways you might be noticing, oh, the way I used to work is not working anymore. I used to be a really structured, organized person and what, what's, it's all gone out the window. And you might be panicking about that. Well, if you notice how aspects of your life are flowing, if you notice that the right person is coming at the right time or the right message is coming at the right time or, oh, I had a bad day, but then the next day I felt better and actually I managed to do some of those things that I thought I was supposed to do the day before. You might be someone who has had to surrender structure this year, surrender organization, and you're seeing the flow in everything. How if, if we surrender and let go, things happen anyway. Equally, you might be someone who has always been quite go with the flow. And one of your ways of coping this year or changing this year is you're like, I'm going to build routine. I'm going to build structure. So the reason I was told to bring that up is many of us are experiencing the reverse of our previous norm. Many of us are experiencing the reverse of our previous norm. So what used to be our normal has now gone 360. It's okay, it's, it's quite normal. It's, it's, you know, if you are having a freak out, if you are stressed, if you are feeling down, do not think there's anything wrong with you. You are just in 2020 and these are the waves that are happening. The trick is realizing they are waves, they will change, you will get back up. And when you get back up, do you need to do things differently or is some part of your mind trying to make things how they were? And that's simply not possible anymore. So many of you will be noticing this 
relationship between flow and structure. Last month, I talked about how fast manifestation is happening these days, how things are really, when you get in the flow and when you get in the zone, manifestation happens really quickly, quite magically. So if you feel like you're lacking manifestation and flow, check how much you are focusing on stillness and quiet, quietening yourself down, bringing yourself back to you. And also, see if you need to do things a little differently. Are you rigidly trying to organize things and it's not working? Try something different, try the reverse. You can't lose anything. And more importantly, you might be surprised how much you gain by doing it very differently. Last but not least, I think this one is very telling. Small acts of peace. Small acts of peace. How can you create small acts of peace in the world this month? And how can you invite yourself to experience small acts of peace? Small acts of peace, it might be you sending a sweet message to a friend. It might be you having a very intimate moment where you're sat in a garden looking at a tree or you're looking at a bird out the window and you're just very present in that moment with what's happening. There's a peace to the now versus a worry about the future, a stress about the past. Small acts of peace are when we can be very in the presence of love in the present moment, in the presence of in this moment, everything is all okay. And I'm going to help someone feel that or I'm going to let myself receive the truth of that by one of the things in the world that helps me come to the moment and go, wow, look at that beautiful tree. Look at this beautiful tree. It's been here a very long time and it's still here right now and it's magnificent. These small acts of peace that we give to ourselves or to others are very galvanizing right now. We need them. So if you are one of those people going, oh my God, the world's gone crazy, Offer the world some sanity. Offer a friend some sanity. Offer yourself some sanity. Because what starts to happen if that's all we see and that's all we focus on is we come off balance. We start to go into that storm ourselves and then we lose our center. And then we're no good to anyone and we're no good to ourselves. So the balancing act of this year, one of the things that you can help that balancing act to become more balanced this, this month is going to be small acts of peace. So thank you everyone for tuning in and um, a couple of things. So if you are watching on YouTube, please hit subscribe and the notification bell and you will always receive uh, these videos whenever they come out first. I also have a weekly video podcast. It's called Impact the World. And I interview different change makers, creatives, healers, entrepreneurs, every week with the realization that so many of us are doing things very differently these days. I wanted to share the stories of a range of people who are doing interesting things in the world in the hope that it's nice to get to know about them and their work, but more importantly, that it might inspire you what you could do differently. So check out Impact the World. It's free. It comes out every week and uh, you can find it here on my YouTube channel or you can head on over to Apple Podcasts and you'll find Impact the World with Lee Harris there. And if you do like the show, please leave us a rating and a review um, and subscribe. All of that really helps. Um, this month, uh, we have a couple of brand new recordings for you called Connect to the Earth and Connect to the Cosmos. These are 20 minutes channeled meditations with sound healing music from DeVore. And these are as ever available for free for members of our portal community. They're also available in our store as a double set. And at the end of this, I'm going to play you a video trailer that our video editor, Rebecca, has created um, with a clip from Connect to the Cosmos. For those of you who aren't familiar with the portal, it's our monthly members community. It's where I offer tools, resources. Stephen Washington also offers Qigong in there. We have meditations. There's a whole wealth of uh, support and tools inside the portal and we love our portal community. So if you're curious about it, you can try it out for a month and see if it's for you. You can find all details at theportal.world. This month on November 20th, we are releasing our music album. It's called Awaken. If you've been following my updates for the last year or two, you sometimes will hear 
sections from songs uh, in the final video trailers uh, because they are always or often part of the monthly mp3s that we create so we have created a music album it's tuned to 528 hertz which is often considered the miracle note it's a healing frequency and it's a 10 track album and it will be on all platforms uh, on november 20th if you want more details on it or to pre-order the album or check out some of the special items that we have, you can visit awakenalbum.com. And as the month goes on, more will be revealed over on that page. And we're going to have a special free listening party uh, on November 20th. So if any of you wanted to experience the album, Devor and I will be there and uh, you can sign up for that for free on the awakenalbum.com website. And finally, um, Stephen Washington, who is an amazing Qigong teacher, Pilates teacher, and wellness consultant, but also my lovely husband, and many of you are familiar with him, he is starting a weekly class, and that is going to begin on November 17th. He's an incredible Pilates teacher. I'm sure many of you are familiar with his Qigong, but um, I can testify that his Pilates work is incredible. So. He is doing a fusion class, it's called Core Qigong. And he is fusing a class that will have some Pilates and some Qigong. So it will be great for any of you who love either of those modalities, but it's also beginner friendly. So if you wanted to check out his classes, uh, they start on November 17th and all details can be found at stephenwashingtonexperience.com or coreqigong.com. And as ever, we put all the links underneath this video. For now, here is the excerpt from Connect to the Cosmos, and we hope you have a great month and we'll see you in December. Big love, everyone. You are of everything and everywhere. You are of everything and everywhere. And the coding for that experience is written in your cosmic origins. Your cosmic origins, those parts of your soul and energy field, those parts of your physical body which come from the stars and are deeply connected to the stars, the cosmos, the universe. Those codes are the codes which allow you to expand. So when you connect to the cosmos, you are connecting to your expanded self as a human. You are expanding your human self. Connecting requires your focus, attention, expanding your soul, your mind, your higher mind. But it also always involves your heart. You cannot fully connect to the cosmos without connecting to your heart, through your heart. So often the heart is seen as a human aspect. Yet the light of your heart chakra is entirely cosmic. The light and power of your heart chakra comes from the stars. It is what takes you beyond the human. It is what connects you to everything. <laughs>